Rather, welcome back to another edition of Confessions of an Amateur Photographer. I am your amateur photographer, Reagan, and we are just going to jump right in because this week we are talking new versus used. And I thought it was a really important topic to cover because, I mean, photography is one of those things where you can spend as much or as little as you want. But it's also one of those hobbies that is so wide open right, in terms of gear, in terms of what you can get and how much you can put. And I think I just repeated myself. <laughs> okay, so this week we are looking at new versus you. So quick backstory, I did a lot of research on um, DSLR cameras before I bought mine. The thing that held me back for the longest time was the price because I didn't want to pay the amount of money that they wanted for the type of camera that I bought because it would have been upwards of eight or $900. So I was looking at uh, lower tier cameras um, that are still good quality, but were a little bit less. And then I came upon the idea of buying use, which is something I hadn't considered. And after thinking about it and researching it, I discovered that getting a used older camera it's just as good, sometimes better than getting the new fancy one. And the price takes a lot nicer too. So let's get started. So tips for buying cameras. So number one tip, determine the type of use that you wanna get it over. Um, so are you just starting out? Or are you like a professional photographer? If you're a professional photographer, you're probably not watching this, right? But if you're just starting out in photography, you have to determine, is it okay? You know, do if you're just starting out in photography, you have to think about what type of camera you want. Do you want something that you can learn off of and not feel bad about banging around from time to time? Or do you want, you know, one that hasn't been used at all. You get what I'm talking about. When I got my camera, price was important to me, but I also wanted something that I could learn off. So I wanted something that was a step above a beginner camera, a beginner DSLR camera that I could learn off of and not feel bad about bumping and banging around from time to time, which is why you suited now, obviously, if you want the new packaging and you want to know that nobody else has ever touched it before and if money is not an object for you, it doesn't matter the price, then get new. The other thing to think about is, is it important to you to get a, le a lens with your camera, right? Because a lot of the used cameras they don't necessarily come with lenses, unless you're buying off of like Facebook or whatever, Kijiji. Whereas some of the new cameras, most of the new cameras will come with a lens, which is why they're a little bit more. The other way to save money is what, what I'll show you in a minute is you can buy the body of a new camera if you already have lens. There's a lot of ways that you can finagle and save money because photography can be an expensive hobby, especially when it comes to lenses. But there are ways to save and to still get into something that you like. So I'm going to show you, we are just going to go through this and talk about new versus used cameras. And um, yeah, so first of all, this is not sponsored in any way by the site that I'm showing you. This is the site that I use and I'm simply showing you, um, you know, the difference between um, new versus used and what it looks like. So this is in no way sponsored by Henry's. This is simply what I'm showing you and this is just my go-to store. If you are in the States or another country, you probably have your own go-to camera store that you can find all this information on. So first we're gonna look at new cameras. So obviously it's a price point. So right here, you can buy the body of a Nikon 5600 DSLR camera. Um, 
it's going to cost you about $780 um, and you still have to get the lens, but if you have your own lens, that is an option. Um, and then, so this is kind of one of the cheaper beginner cameras. This is something similar to what I was looking at because I was cheap. Um, so this is like a beginner camera. Now there's nothing wrong with this camera. Um, it didn't have everything that I wanted on it, but you give and you take some, right? And it does come with a lens. So this is 569. So again, photography, it can be one of those things where the biggest thing that held me back from getting a DSLR for so long was the price because you're paying such an exorbitant amount of money for something that you probably never used before. And I know with me, I got mine during the pandemic and I couldn't go into a store and actually touch it and feel it, um, which, you know, held me back even further from spending a lot of money. So this is the um, Canon ES Rebel SL3. So this is one that I was looking at and it's very similar to the one that I ended up getting used. Um, this is $900. So just to give you an idea, but this is basically like mine. Mine also has some flip screen. Um, now the only difference with this is it would have Wi-Fi capability, which mine does not have, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, and my screen isn't touch screen, but again, I don't really care about it. It's, um, I ended up getting a manual camera that has a lot of the same features as this, and I'm very happy with it. So, so this is, this is what I was looking at. And this was the price that I was not wanting to spend on. Okay, so that is a new camera. So again, you can get the body. Um, this is a good option if you have a lens. Now the thing to remember with lenses, and I will be doing a video on lenses because there's lots of stuff that I still don't understand about them. But the thing to remember with lenses is that they're either Canon or Nikon. They can't be used um, interchangeably. So a Nikon lens, you can't buy for a Canon camera and the same with a Canon lens for a Nikon camera. Um, but if you do have a Nikon lens, this is a very good option. This is a very popular camera. It's a very basic beginner camera um, that is you know, a good introduction if you're just getting started with DSLR or photography in general. So this would be a good option if you have lenses. Um, so now we're going to move. So I just showed you the Canon SL3, which was $900. So that's the one that I was looking at. And I ended up finding the Canon T3i camera. So the thing that you have to remember about um, cameras in general is to do your research, especially during this time where it's hard to go into stores and actually touch them. You want to do your research. You want to type it into Google, look at the reviews. You want to go to YouTube, watch the videos, um, and make sure that what you're getting is a good camera. Now, I wasn't honestly sure about getting a used camera at first because it was an older model, right? Society says new is always better. But um, used is just as good as new in this case. Um, so the Canon T3i, it came out in 2012. Um, it had all the features I wanted. It had the flip screen. Uh, it had the manual. Um, it didn't come with a lens, but I ended up getting the lens used. Um, just a really good camera. So yeah, so this is what I got. Now this is rated as an eight. So another thing that you'll wanna watch is, and this is why I bought from a reputable site instead of Facebook or Craigslist or Kijiji, um, is because A, it comes with a used warranty. So mine came with a 90 day warranty. You can extend the warranty if that's something that's important to you. But it also um, had a good uh, background on condition ratings because when you're buying something online, you don't always know what you're getting, right? So this is rated as an eight. It means it may have a blemish or two and it's finished, but optically and mechanically it works excellent. So it just like a just like a new camera, right? Obviously it doesn't come with all the fancy packaging and it didn't come with a lens. Um, but 
it came with a charger and it came with a camera. And that's, I mean, when you buy used, you get basic, but you, I saved a lot of money, right? So you compare this to the SL3, there's a big savings there, right? Okay. Okay, so another thing when you're buying used is you want to be aware of buyer sites. So we all know, you know, there's some pretty sketchy people out there. So just be aware. And also, um, again, like if you're not buying from like a reputable like camera or company site, you may you won't get the warranty and the camera may not be in such great condition. You know, the buyer might not be completely different. So just be just be um, cognizant of that, but so that is the SL3. And then there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys. Um, so we're gonna see what the difference between an eight and an eight plus. So this is an used Nikon D5100. It's the exact same camera with two different prices. So we already saw what an eight was, right? Yeah, so this is, as a blemish or two, opti optically it works well. Um, and the 8 plus, so the difference in the pricing is because it's rated as an 8 plus, which means gently use slightly marred finish, reveal under close inspection. So it looks almost like new, opti optically and mechanically excellent. So it works like new as well. So. So just be aware that two difference in rating systems can also mean a variance in the price um, that you might pay for a camera. So um, that's really all there is um, to use cameras. It's new versus used. It's not a huge deal. You just have to remember to do. Um, you just have to remember to do your research, um, you know, and get what is good for you. If new is the way you want to go, then go and buy a new camera. You know, it comes with the lens, it comes with the fancy packaging. Nobody's ever touched it before. But if you're, you don't really care, you're kind of like, a, give me the basics and I'll work out the rest myself. Use, because you can save a ton of money and get a lot more bang for your buck. Um, Anyways, so that is all I have to say on new use. <laughs> that is all I have to say on new versus used cameras. If you have comments um, about this topic, comment below. If you have suggestions for content, comment below. Um, you can also follow me in all the links below. You can check out my photography. Um, follow me on Instagram at the Natural Photo Boutique. I think it is. <laughs> Link is below. Um, and yeah. Thanks for um, tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.